What's up everyone? This week we've got some tips for beginners as well as some things that could help you avoid common mistakes. All right, so stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. So the most important aspect of the fish hobby and for you to have a successful future, you gotta make sure you're having fun. Enjoy what you're doing, no matter what you want, what people say or, or or what influences you have make sure you enjoy what you want to do okay do it your way you don't have to always follow the trending topics or trending items that people are buying do what you want to do another thing is patience is key you're gonna have times where you know you get plants you want them to grow right away you want to see some type of progress but sometimes things take a little uh, transition process to where they won't grow at first they might even actually look like they're dying at first so patience is, is very key in this hobby things won't once again will not always go as planned um, and then third get your DIY on man because one of the things I enjoy most about this hobby is just trying new things um, you know you're gonna be able to experiment within reason of course you don't want to try and kill anything here but uh, yeah when you get something to work or even if you're just replicating uh, something that someone's already created it's a real rewarding experience to know that you did it yourself so enjoy it another thing that goes with patience is I see a lot of people quit too early you know I hear uh, my fish keep dying or you know I can't get plants to grow it looks ugly I, you know there's lots of lots of other uh, problems that people choose for quitting and I think you really need to once again be patient because you're not an established tank is gonna be a lot easier than when you first get a tank that f your first tank and getting everything set up is the roughest portion of the hobby and, and if you don't already know make sure you know the nitrogen cycle uh, so don't quit G give it a chance okay give it like a year or so if you're still not enjoying it at a, after a year you know then maybe it's not for you but I think you uh, think most people once they get get things on a uh, on track to where it's a low maintenance item for them they'll probably enjoy it so if you've decided to put a heater in your tank you'll want to take a few precautions uh, you can either unplug it when you're doing water changes because if the water level falls below the heater it can cause the, the heater to malfunction uh, and it's essentially it could overheat and kill all your fish no one wants to go through that uh, another option is you can place it horizontally like I did here and then just make sure when you do your water changes you don't lower the level past the heater I keep it pretty low because I know how I am you know I usually just do 10% water changes so I'm never gonna get that low as it, to the heater uh, so doing it horizontally at the bottom should be safe and if I were to leave it vertically chances are I will probably forget to unplug that heater at some point and I'm trying to avoid catastrophe so in front of you, you got a five and a half gallon and a ten gallon tank now when you're starting off in the hobby smaller is not always the better choice uh, it is actually more difficult to maintain a small tank versus a larger tank so if you're gonna get into the hobby make sure you choose something larger to make things easier for you as well as give you more options as to what you could keep in it especially if you got the space I'd say go big now we're on the subject of the tank. One of the most important factors is to make sure you get the proper stand for it. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I first started was just a 10 gallon tank, not even this big, 10 gallon tank. These things get pretty heavy once you get water in there. So I bought one of those, well actually I didn't buy, I already had a, uh, one of those particle board stands, a little three, three shelf uh, stands and I figured I'd throw it right on top of there. Well, what happened, is it started to bow in the middle, little by little, little by little, and eventually I ended up uh, busting a seam in the tank. Just a small little bust, but uh, I wasn't home. And 10 gallons of water I made quite the mess. Uh, so if you went bigger, you can imagine the mess that, that happens. So save yourself the headache and get a proper stand. Also make sure when you do the stand, make sure you level it. Leveling means just make sure it's straight because you don't want it to be tilted to where you got a higher water level on one side versus the other. Another thing is your lighting. When you're lighting your fish tank, you don't want your light to be on all day. 
Uh, if you leave it on all day, you can actually cause a lot of problems with your tank as far as algae and making things not look as pleasable as you would like. Uh, so my recommendation is when you get a light, go ahead and make sure you get a timer for it. What a timer would do is to make sure that uh, things stay on schedule. You don't leave the light on too long and it will reduce the amount of algae in your tank. Now just make sure whatever schedule you pick for your light, it's fitting to you because you're gonna to wanna to view your tank and it's not very fun to view with the lights off. So figure out what times you're gonna be home and such and try to schedule around that. In addition, if you decide that you wanna turn on the light for a little bit longer one day because you could override the timer and just turn it on, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Just make sure you remember to turn it off because if you leave it on all day and night, uh, you're probably gonna have algae problems sooner or later. So let's talk about your plug or outlets. Uh, you want to make sure that your outlets are above the ground, okay? Now the reasoning for this is you want drip loops. All your cabling and wiring should have what they call drip loops. So what's going to happen is just in case water were to run down this cable for whatever reason, it's going to have a sag point to where it'll drip off because because the gravity it's not going to go up the wire. It'll come to this point right here and drip on the floor. And guess what? Your outlet's not on the floor, so you're preventing an electrical fire. And this simple step could save you tons of money because the last thing you want is to burn down your house because you decided to just leave it on the floor. So make sure you take that precaution. Here's a cheap, simple item that could also save you a lot of headache. I think I bought mine for like a dollar for a pack of two or something like that at Walmart. Uh, and this is called a check valve. And it's gonna, what you want to do is go ahead and put that on your airline. And it's a pretty simple device. It basically allows air flow or flow to go one direction and not the other. So your air will come from your air pump into the tank, but nothing can come back towards your air pump. Now you might be thinking, what's the reason for that? Well, what could happen is if you have a power outage or your, your air pump stops for whatever reason, it could actually cause a reverse siphon from within the tank. And water will actually go through your airline back to your air pump and actually cause damage to your air pump. Um, and if you go to turn it back on or the power comes back on for whatever reason, once again, you can cause another fire. So doing this will save your air pump and probably save you more. As a beginner, try and pick a fish that will go well with your water in its natural state. Essentially, we'll find out what levels you have in your water when they come out of the tap or your well or whatever the case is that you have. And don't try to make, don't get so focused on a fish that you're going to want to adjust your water to, to to fit that fish right there's plenty of there's tons of fish out there so there's got to be one that you like that goes with the water that you have and it makes life a lot easier especially in the beginning if you start to if you if you're in this hobby for a long time and you decide that you want a partic particular fish because you've had all the other ones that you've wanted then you can start playing with it you'll be more experienced and you'll know how to handle adjusting your water um, but I think it's in your best interest to find out what your water is and get a fish that does well in that water. So thanks for watching everyone. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, like, subscribe, comment below. And until next time, I'll catch y'all later.